here's a scenario for you. You're trying to upload, download, or whatever, interact with your server, trying to just manage some files in it, and it's all command line based, right? You don't have a GUI interface, and you could use something like FileZilla here, connect to it, manage all the keys, and just kind of interact it with this way, or you could use something like File Browser, right? Where you can get a nice, beautiful GUI, connect to it. You can, you know, if you have a VPN, you can still VPN this way, host it via Cloudflare, and you can manage and interact with your server and all the files on it this way. You can, you know, you can share files from here you can upload download files all of that good stuff so i'm going to show you how in this video so just to quickly cover some key things here what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using docker if you're familiar with my videos this should be no surprise to you so make sure you have docker installed if you don't i have a video dedicated to getting you started with self-hosting so go check that out i'll have a link somewhere in the corner for you and you can get all prepared uh, to follow along so follow that video and then come back and you should be good to follow along so everything else i'm going to cover all the steps so as long as you have docker or you just you know you're in a position to follow along with docker and docker compose you're good to go so let's get into it so at the moment i am connected to one of my servers this is the our zim server and this is actually running on a zimmer board i'll have a link if you're keen to check out what that looks like if you're curious but we'll just focus on my actual server right now so the way i always kind of set up my um Docker files is that I have a folder for each sort of compose that I'm interacting with and what we're going to be doing is using the file browser folder here so if you're keen to follow along this is kind of how I structure all my uh, docker containers and the, the the compose files and anything to do with that docker container lives in that folder so feel free to follow that same sort of structure so we're going to change directory into my file browser and in here i do actually have it all set up so i'm going to explain to you how you set all of this up so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to pull everything down start fresh so i can show the exact steps so i'm going to remove everything that i have for my file browser just fully remove everything right so that's all cleaned up i'm also going to remove that file browser database and i'm also going to remove the settings.json and clear that up and ls and we just have the docker compose file so if i do a nano into this docker compose file i'm going to share this file with you so i'll have a link to my book stack uh, where you can grab this docker compose file with everything in it okay so a link to that will be provided so you can see here we are using the official file browser image and the reason i'm not showing you the compose file is because they don't actually have one they've got just direct docker run commands so this is their one here so this is their official documentation so it's saying here you know it's just a docker run i like using compose files uh so yeah so that's why i will provide the compose file because it's not here uh but this is a i'll have a link to this official documentation though because they actually cover some key points uh that's i'll cover in a second as well so Anyway, this is the Docker Compose file. It's very nice and simple. So we're using their image, which is File Browser, and we're going to name this container File Browser. Nice and easy. Now, with the the top section here, which is the home, is where you're actually going to where File Browser will have access to and where you will see from. Okay, so I'm going to say from the home directory down is where file browser will have access to so if i just close down here for a second and do a ls from home you will see this is where file browser will have access from so everything with a nick actually only everything within tech docs uh, it will have access to there is another user here but tech docs itself doesn't have access to that so i'll show you that in a second as well but if I do home and then tech docs, you know, everything in here, file browser will have access to. So in this compose file, that's where you're telling, you know, where I'm going to have access from. If you only want file browser to have, you know, access to a specific folder, then you could change that to be a specific folder, right? I could have, uh, if I didn't want that nick to be there, I could actually just have tech docs, but then I won't have that weird permission stuff. So I could change it to that. Uh, I'm just going to keep it how I have it. Now, Two key things here. This one here is actually saying to the Docker container that we are going to provide a database file for our um, file browser, right? Now, if we don't actually have this existing already, it will actually just create a folder named filebrowser.db and you'll get an error. It will break, okay? So 
If you ever get a weird error happening when you're trying to deploy your file browser, it's probably because you haven't made this file. So Docker is just going ahead and making a directory instead, uh, which doesn't work. So there's, there's two files we will have to make, which is this one. And the exact same goes for the settings.json. Okay, so we just need to make sure those exist. The environment, this is actually going to grab our user ID and our group ID for us. So we don't actually need to specify any of that. So that's fine. So the, the main key points again to cover is where this top one here is um, where file uh, browser uh, will, uh, you know, access from. So everything uh, from this directory is where file browser will, will have access. This one here, we need to create this folder, uh, this file. And we also need to create the settings.json, but uh, file browser give us the information that needs to go into this one, but this file browser can be empty. Again, I'm going to show you this, so let's get into it, enough talking. If I clear this up a bit, so again, we've got a, a folder here, file browser within it, we've just got that docker compose file, okay? What we need to do is we can just do a simple touch and then we need to grab that database. We need to name it the exact name that the Docker Compose file is expecting. And it's expecting file browser.db. So if you just want to be cautious, you can just copy that name and then do touch and then paste. Touch is just going to make a empty file, right? There's nothing else in it. So if I do enter and then ls, we now have that file browser.db file, right? There's nothing in it, but uh, file browser will use that as the database file. So it needs that. And we also need one more, which is the settings one. But if we go to the official documentation, it's saying here, hey, we already have a configuration file with you with some defaults for the settings. So feel free to use that and we will. So we'll click here, make this a bit bigger for you. Now, this is just stuff here for file browser that it needs. And we don't actually need to specify anything in here. We can leave this all as how it is, and this will give file browser all the settings and config that it needs um, on the container side. So again, we don't really need to worry about any of this. All of this is being mapped inside of the container. So we'll just leave it as default. So if we copy this, right, we can copy it by highlighting it, or we can just click this one here, go back to our server and do a nano and the file was called settings.json, right? So we do settings.json, hit enter, paste that in, save it, close out of it, okay? So let's clear the screen up, do an ls. Now we have the docker compose file, the file browser.db, and the settings.json. And if we do a cat on these, you'll see that file is empty, and you'll see the settings file just has the standard stuff in it. So that's all we need to do, okay? We've got our Docker Compose file that I've provided for you. Just make sure you change your volumes to match what you need. The file browser.db, it's empty, but will be used in a second. And then we have the settings.json. So what we can do now is do a Docker Compose up hyphen D and hit enter. It's running. It's created those containers. And if we do a docker ps, and let's just do a search for file browser. There we go. So we can see it's actually up and running, right? And it's running on port 8095. Now you feel free to change that port to whatever you like. So you can see this one here, feel free to change the 8095 to 8080, whatever. It's just, I have a lot of containers running. So 8095 is a port that I have free. So, we can essentially type in the IP address and on the port to connect to file browser. So mine's just alzim on 80.9.5. And if I hit enter, there we go, right? We've got file browser. Now, if I type in admin and the username and password by default, we're just admin admin. Now we can hit login. There we go. And like I said before, see how I've got the Nick and the TikTok. So I had two users, but TikTok was the user I used to make this, right? So if I click on Nick, right, and try to connect to it, we don't have permission, right? So I should really change that to home TikToks, and then I'll just see this by default. But now I'm in the server, right? I, I can connect to everything I want. I can upload files from my local machine. 
to to the server i can download files as well so let's say if i went into the docker folder um, and let's say the file browser these are the files that i just made before and let's say i want a copy of the database file and just download it allow there we go i've just downloaded that right so it's it's really that simple we can make new folders on the left it's it's pretty self-explanatory i think um now the first thing i would suggest for you to do is come in here and change your password even if it's just a local instance it's not good to leave them as default admin as your password so change it here please um you can also yeah like i said you can share you can set up other users who want to be able to connect to this uh i'm just going to leave it as uh, the single user for this case but yeah everything else i think is pretty self-explanatory that's file browser very straightforward uh i i just it's just good to have a tool like this right you can you can uh, publish it using cloudflare put it behind single sign-on so only you can access it and if you're away from home you need to connect to your server and grab something this is the way you know don't have to try ssh and copy things down that way or using a command line file browser now there's many other alternatives to file management for your servers and i will cover those as well you know i'm just because i've covered file browser doesn't mean i'm not going to cover any other alternatives i will cover those as well uh, but file browser is a very good place to start thank you so much for watching uh, also thank you so much for the the amount of views and everything on my last video that has hit like 20 something thousand uh within like five or six days which is just insane for my channel uh and yeah really appreciate it so thank you so much and i will see you in the next video bye bye